Welcome back, Albert here. Today we will be discussing Tar Minister. Minister was born in 1474 of the Second Age and was the grandson of Tar Surin, the ninth king of Numenor. Minister's name meant Tower Watcher. Minister existed during a time of great conflict and change for the Numenor and Middle Earth. There is no information about his youth, but it can be assumed he too was raised in the region of Mithamar in central Numenor before eventually moving to the capital city. This next part can't be confirmed, but it is my belief that at some stage between 1556 SA and 1693 SA, Minister was called before the Queen and appointed Regent, Lord and Captain General of the Numenorean Navy and Colonies of Middle-earth, or it may have been widely known he would be heir to the throne even at this stage of his life, as Tartalperian had no interest in marriage or children, and he was her younger brother's son, so Prince Heir may be more fitting, but whatever his title, he would be by Tartalperian's side from this point on. However, this peaceful time would be short-lived, because in 1693 SA, the War of the Elves and Sauron began for Mordor. Through the plains of Kalinarthron, Sauron's host emerged. The Numenorians already settled around the coastlines of Middle-earth since the day of Tar Aldarion, around Vinyalondie or Elandir, the haven used to build great ships for the Guild Adventurers in its heyday, began to build up a force and supplies for war, based on the urges of Gil-galad. But no one expected the force Sauron would bring to Eriador, and in 1695 SA, the fears of Gil-galad would be realised. The vast armies of Mordor unleashed. Sauron crossed the fords of Isen and began his relentless siege of a region. Gil-galad sent word to Numenor asking for greater aid, but Numenor would not answer this call for help until 1700 SA, five years later. Now this is something that can't be explained and nothing in Tolkien's writings that I could find can explain this delay. But one could speculate perhaps Gilgalad didn't call for aid until much later, and so it was in five years. Or the existing and settled Numenorean colonies were considered enough support as far as Tartalperian and Minister were concerned, and the main Numenorean fleet was held back, and merely supplies were sent instead in the early years. In either case, the delay would come at a great price, as you will soon learn. The invasion of Eriador, the destruction of Eregion, the death of Celebrimbor, Celebrimbor, the great ring forger, and one of the last direct descendants of the line of Feanor, he was captured and tortured, finally died from his torment, pierced by many arrows, and by some accounts, Sauron used his body as a banner as he faced the forces of Elrond, the same forces sent by Gilgalad to aid Celebrimbor in his desperate stand. The surviving elves scattered as Sauron laid waste to Eregion. Some fled north with Elrond's retreating forces aided by the dwarves of Khazadum to Imladrius, where Elrond had built his refuge. It was there they stood their ground in hope of salvation. Other survivors escaped to Khazadum and once again with the aid of the dwarves made their escape. But despite the best efforts of the dwarves to help them, Eregion still fell and by 1697 SA Sauron had driven back the dwarves, forcing them to close the gates of Khazad-dûm, 1700 SA. Sauron is now the master of Eriador, save only the besieged Imladrius and the line held by Gilgalad, his elves and some men in a desperate defence of Mithlan, and all seemed lost. When out of nowhere, or by design, the Numenorean fleet arrived, sent by Minister. The arrival of the Numenorean fleet immediately changed the balance of the war. This fleet was commanded by Admiral Kiriatur, which unfortunately I pronounced incorrectly in my previous video as Suryatur. His name meant Shipmaster, a fitting name and meaning. Upon arrival, Kiriatur strategically divided his forces, 
sending some directly to Gilgalad and the rest south to Tharbad via the Goathalo River. Unbeknownst to Sauron, Kiryatur had more forces at his disposal and quickly overwhelmed Sauron's army. Sauron's host was driven back with heavy casualties. This new contingent fell upon Sauron's rear force from the southwest. After this host was uprooted and driven from Saur Ford, while Gilgalad's elves and the Numenorean reinforcements attacked from the north. In the ensuing battle of the Gawathlo, Sauron and his forces became caught between the two mighty armies. He fled across the Isen with his small remaining forces, but was overwhelmed again in the east of Kalinathron by the Numenorians. Sauron, with no more than a bodyguard, fled to Dagalad, a region known as the Green Province, near what would be called the Dead Marshes, and in the end, unfortunately, Sauron was able to escape, and in 1701 SA, Sauron retreated into Mordor, but swore vengeance upon the victorious Numenorians. Thus ended the great conflict, Eriador was saved, but lay in ruins. Eregion had been completely destroyed, and a great many of the rings of power had fallen into the hands of Sauron. Ministir was credited for this decisive victory and it became part of his legacy. This victory reinvigorated the Numenorean people and their desire to expand, and by 1800 SA they had started to colonize Middle-earth once more, stretching out their influence for good or for bad. More on this in my next video. As you see, Minas Tirith's life before Tar Telperion stepped down as queen in 1731 SA was a complex one, and it is impossible to know what overall involvement he had during this time. Depending on what source you decide to adhere to, his involvement varies in degrees. But as mentioned, in 1731 SA, Minister became Tar Minister, the 11th ruler of Numenor. It is said Minister envied the Eldar when he decided to send the Numenorean fleet, but by his actions, he showed he still loved them and revered them. An unfortunate confliction of feelings the Numenorians would express from this point on, as a yearning for the undying lands had grown in them. As mentioned at the beginning, I said his name meant Tower Watcher. This name he had because he built a high tower upon the hill of Orometh, near the haven of Andunie in western Numenor, and it's where he would spend parts of his days gazing westward. Tar Minister ruled for 138 years and handed the scepter over to his only child, Kiryatan, in 1869 SA. Tar Minister lived on another four years, dying in 1873 SA at the age of 399. It was rumored that Tar Minister was coerced by his son into giving up the throne. This can't be confirmed but if this is true, it would mark the beginning of the shadow that fell upon the Numenorians from this point on. As you may have noticed, Tar Minister's story is somewhat incomplete. Most of his life was shadowed by the Great War of the Elves and Sauron, and only after the war do we get some insight into the man, and most of his timeline is up for debate due to some discrepancies in the lore. I hope you enjoyed that. It was tempting to talk more about the war and the Numenorean colonization of Middle-earth, but I didn't want to move too far away from Minas Tirith himself, and these are things I will talk about in future videos. As always, if you like this, please like and subscribe, and please leave a comment below if you feel I missed something or you have any suggestions for videos you would like me to make. Thanks again for watching, and may the light of Yarendil. Guide your way.